Grayskull's gifting power swords to heroes other than He-Man. Here's a look at the brand new Mattel Turtles of Grayskull Leonardo Heroic Ninja Turtle Leader. An explosion from the Technodrome sends the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles across dimensions to Eternia. Now augmented with tech from Man-at-Arms Armory, Leonardo leads his brothers into battle for the power of Skull. While He-Man gets a little help from the heroes in a half-shell, grabbing the tape measure to see how tall the brand new Turtles of Skull Leonardo stands. And then, of course, we'll bring in a couple of figures as well for comparison's sake. Leo stands at about five and a half inches in height, or the figure's going to be about 14 centimeters tall. To show you how he stands with other He-Man figures, did want to bring in a Master Universe Origins He-Man, because if anybody's collecting the newer line, would at least have a He-Man in their collection. Yeah, they're scaled pretty good. I thought, if anything, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles of Grayskull would be more in line with maybe the cartoon collection that we're also getting from Mattel. Speaking of the cartoon collection, seeing as he's pulling it from his armory and all, here's what the figure looks like with the cartoon collection Man-at-Arms. And if you did want to know what he looked like with another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure, I did want to bring in one from NECA Toys. I was actually surprised to see how much smaller the stuff we got from NECA was. But of obviously, you're probably not going to be displaying the turtles along with the stuff we're getting from NECA, but at least it gives you some size ideas. Though it is a subcategory, the Turtles of Grayskull still managed to pack with them things that you would expect to get with more Master Universe figures. Like, for example, the ever-useless piece of paper that only just is there to remind us that, first of all, they're cutting down trees to produce things like this. But it's also to show you as well that even though it is a turtle figure, you can still remove the arms, you can still remove the lower torso and the boots, and of course you can take off Leo's head taking it off the ball joint. This will be quickly discarded into my recycling bin, never to be spoken of again. One thing I do like about this is that they also come include with their own specific Turtles of Grayskull comic book. This one just happens to be listed as By the Power of Pizza. Uh, I do like the look and the artwork of inside the actual comic itself. The thing I'm surprisingly not liking about it is while all I think the artwork is really good, and it's very different of a kind of artwork than what we're used to getting here with the mini comics of Masters, the thing I don't like, honestly, about it is the way they draw the turtles. Look at the way they draw the turtles. Overly sized heads. They kind of look a little out of... I don't know. There's something not quite right by the way they drew the turtles. Teela looks really awesome down here, as well as Trapjaw, which is a combination of Trapjaw and a Mauser. But then when we also flip it to the next page, what is going on with the turtles? They actually kind of look like they're peeping Toms. Look at the way that Michelangelo is sort of twiddling his fingers. I, again, like I do like the way they've actually designed all the other characters around it, but there's just something unsettling about the way they've actually illustrated the turtles. Uh, one thing I do want to see, though, as we get a future figures, hopefully, from these, is this version of Krang. Look at the cool way they designed Krang here. And they also, of course, give you an idea of what a He-Man looks like once he gets exposed to mutagen. We will be, of course, looking at this He-Man in an upcoming video. Yes, though, I did tear a little bit of the corner trying to remove this from its plastic prison, but I'm sure we probably are all going to be getting more of these mini-comics that I don't have to worry as much about it. Advertised, though, on the back, speaking of other figures, there's Leonardo, there's He-Man, Donatello, and Man-at-Arms. I'm not going to be discarding this, don't worry, I'll put it just off to the side. Now, Leo Art also does come included with, of course, his armory. Now, most of it is already actually already attached onto the figure's body, mimicking very much the kind of thing we would get with Man-at-Arms. The figure, though, granted, also does come included with two halves of a sword. The idea with the katanas is that you can actually take the two and merge them together, similar to what, Leon, uh, what, what He Man would have had when he merges, of course, the other half of the power sword with the one that comes included with Skeletor. Uh, if you wanted to have them just on their own, I mean, they more than work really as side standalone katanas. The only thing, unfortunately, about it, though, is if you were to, say, take your figure, I find like the handles, being that they're only halvesies, don't really fit as well in the figure's hands. When you put them in, they sit really loose. The only really way that they actually work well is if you twist them slightly to the side. But unfortunately, then by doing it, you're only then going to see the very visible halvesies on the other side of the sword. But it does fit okay in Leo's hands. They just don't fit as well until you, of course, combine the two halves together. Again, you can see how floppy mess they actually are. Just dropping the sword off into the floor here. Uh, the actual sword, though, can be merged. It's just a case of actually, if you look at the side, one side has holes. The other side has pegs. And you just line the two then together. 
and you get yourself the sword. The sword is pretty flimsy, but once you do attach everything though and snap these in place, you get a little bit more of a solid sword. The sword itself does look good, something that you'd expect He-Man to be wielding himself, but because you're also now merging two halves together, you get a much thicker hilt and a lot easier for then Leo to hold it. Again, you just clip that into his hand. Sometimes though, clipping into his hand does result in the two halves uh, coming apart. So you just want to be aware of that, of course, when you're putting it into uh, Leonardo's hands. The other thing that the figure comes also included with is a guard for his forearm. Uh, it's one of the actual things that are packed with the figure that aren't already attached onto the figure. The shell, half shell, if you will, does those slide up on Leo's arms. And I don't think it necessarily matters which side you have it. On the back of the uh, of the artwork, actually, they have Leo sort of facing this way, and he's fighting actually Shredder, another figure we will look at in an upcoming review. So based then on that, they've had the guard on this side of the figure's body. Not not that again, it really does matter. Just to attach it though, it doesn't quite fit completely over Leo's hand the way it is right now. So you just want to detach Leo's hand from the form, just wiggle it off like that. There goes the shell, and then we're just going to slide on the forearm guard. Very, again, similar to what you would have had with Man-at-Arms. Man-at-Arms also has this same problem, too, with all this armor always shifting around on him. You might see me, during the course of this review, con constantly continuing to adjust the, the armor, just because, again, it's always continuing to slide on his arm. Let's just get Leo's hand back in there. There we go. But you can see like how loose, unfortunately, this is. You can ride it all the way up to the top. And once the elevator's onto the top, then it's not going to go as much around all over the place. But it is always sort of a floppy mess when it comes to Leonardo. Something that you may have already seen fling across the room. I've got it retrieved right here. The figure also comes included with his half shell shield. The shield attaches onto the back of the figure's body, but it doesn't attach securely. The first time you do this, the first time you remove this, you're going to find it's going to be loose every other time after that. It attaches, though, there's two pegs on the inside of the shield, and literally, again, just plugs onto the back of his bandolier armor, and you're supposed to plug it in like that. But once again, you've done it the first time. Every other time after that, even when you're starting to move the figure around, you'll, you're going to notice this shell falls off way too frequently. Now, again, it can either be attached onto the back of the figure's body, and then once it is attached onto the back of the figure's body, there we go, you can actually take your sword and sheath it on the back. Now, the sheath sword doesn't sheath as well when it's two halves together like this. It really honestly is easier if you just have the two swords detached. Let's just separate them right now. Of course, once I've now got the two halves together, even the power of Grayskull can't even separate these. There we go. Almost got it. Almost got it. There we go. Okay. Once you have the two halves separated, you can almost fit them both in there, but it really does only accommodate kind of one sword, one half of the sword. So you could have one displayed on the back of Leo's body, and then, of course, take the other half of what's now just only one half of the sword and fit it actually into his hand. The thing you can also do as well with Leo is once you've down to attach the, the half shell shield, you can take the shield, and there's a little handle here on the back that you can clip into Leonardo's hand. So if you wanted to, then again, you can have the shield in one of his hands, then just attach the power sword katana together and have him wielding it in the other. You could still really sheath the sword on the front, but it looks a little ridiculous that he's carrying around a shield that has a sheathed sword. I do like the idea that he has a shell that detaches like this. Although again, I just wish that maybe the pegs were a little bit longer or they had devised an easier way of attaching onto the back of the figure's body just because the shield falls off way too frequently. I'm going to leave it off for right now just because I know it is something that's going to fall off. One thing that's interesting, though, is the way they've sculpted the back of the figure's body. Even though the shell is now missing, you can still see that they've sculpted a shell on the back of Leo's body. And I'm sure it's probably going to be the case with the rest of the turtles also as well. It's just weird to see it on the back of the turtle body molded just right to his torso as opposed to a separate piece. Or at the very least, if it was going to be a separate piece, why not just have had this? Or if it was molded to one piece, why not just have had painted this to maybe match the colors of his loincloth below? Speaking of Leo's loincloth, do we want to speak, speak of Leo's loincloth? I guess we'll probably just talk about that more in a second. First, I did want to show you guys the head sculpt for Leonardo. It's really good. Funny enough, though, it's a property net that's now being done by Mattel. Mattel, of course, is taking the licensing and borrowing it, at least for the time being, from Playmates. And I feel, honestly, they're delivering us better-looking turtle figures than what we would have maybe gotten from Playmates. The head sculpt for Leo is really good. I like the long bandana that he has on the back of the figure's body. If you overlook the fact that maybe the colors of the blue aren't quite the colors that he also has on the armor, it's pretty close, though. But it's a good-looking head sculpt for Leo. I don't really have any complaints at all with it. 
Of course, he does have the bandolier armor there on the front. Now, instead of actually having the L down below here, where normally it would be placed on a Ninja Turtle, it is instead, like He-Man, placed around the middle section here of his armor. It is, though, a separate piece, and the armor piece actually attaches then onto the back fur that he has there as well. Nothing does seem removable. You might maybe be able to take the top fur off by detaching it from the top of the bandolier, but it just seems like it's going to cause more problems than anything else. Of course, he does have the skirting there down below, very similar to what we would get with Skeletor, and that's nicely done here in a metallic blue that matches, again, the coloring that they got for the, the emblem there on the front, and, of course, the armor that he has on the sides. And, of course, no turtle would be complete without big turtle feet. And, again, like, they look really good. They have peggles on the undersides of their feet, and they've added some additional blue to match the coloring of his headband there on the top as well. Now, for the articulation on, on I was going to say He-Man, but on the articulation here for the new, brand new Turtles of Grey Skull Leonardo, of course, for the head sculpt, the head is going to rotate all the way around. It's going to be on a ball joint. It does look up, and it does look down, and all the things in between. It doesn't really cause too much of a problem by having all this fur on the back of the figure's body. He more than easily can rotate his head all the way around. Shoulders, though, hinge out. Uh, they don't really are obviously not going to be hindered as much with the armor. I mean, you could still shift the armor up, but like just the armor alone is the one thing that just continues to bother me about this figure. It's always shifting around. Again, if you've had manned arms, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The arms move forward, the arms move back. The figure, like other Masters figures, only has a single hinge in the elbow that rotates back and forth and also has rotation all the way around. There's a swivel in the waist. The legs do split out on ball joints once again. You can take the legs and move forward, move them back. A single hinge in the knee rotates the lower leg, rotates the boot. There's actually, even though it's not really a boot, the lower half of his guard here right by his calf does swivel back and forth. And like other He-Man figures, you have a hinge up and down on the back and forth on the ankle, and there's also a nice little ankle rocker there as well. It's a nice looking Leo. The thing about it though is while it's combining two 80s properties that would really on paper make sense, I don't know if this is a line that's going to cater to everybody. After all, if you are one that likes to collect Ninja Turtles, would you then be also interested in Master Universe figures or vice versa? If you are, for example, a fan of Master Universe, could you see yourself then venturing off to get something like from of course, nin Ninja Turtles. I don't know if that's always going to be the case. I mean, there's obviously in the past, Playmates has really tackled the licensing by incorporating other properties. So that's why you've always had like sports team turtles. You've had Star Trek turtles and some to leveling degrees have been successful. The thing about the turtles, though, is I feel like the collectors of Ninja Turtles are going to be more interested in collecting this line. Then again, Masters fans. Masters fans are, an, uh, speaking for myself more so, I'm a bigger Master Universe fan than I am a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan. If anything, I have more interest in the mutated characters that we're getting from this line, and maybe not as much for the Turtles. Again, if you are interested to collect Ninja Turtle, then you'll probably be collecting anything and everything that has the Turtle brand on it. But I think if you're collecting also Master Universe, Master Universe oh, more to, Motu, I don't know if you're going to be as interested to collect the Ninja Turtles, even though it is really supposed to belong of the same universe. As we now jump over to the rotisserie and get the final looks of the new Turtles of Grayskull Leonardo, I do like the figure, but I don't know how much I love the figure. If just honestly looking at the back of the packaging and just the first wave alone, I'm actually kind of more interested in the mutated characters than I am the half-shell heroes themselves. I mean, the Turtles look good, but I don't know how well I like the idea of them just belonging in the same universe as the Eternian heroes. I mean, He-Man and the Masters have their place. The Turtles, of course, have theirs. And to combine, really, the two, it seems almost like a forced crossover. I mean, I like the look of the Leonardo, but to have these figures on display, I'd honestly probably have them in their own self-contained shelf than having them try to be paired along with the rest of Master Universe Origins figures. The figure does have the same level of articulation that you come to expect now when it comes to the regular He-Man figures, and he comes with some decent accessories. Unfortunately, though, the half-shell shield doesn't really stay properly in place on the back of his bandolier armor. So you may find yourself, if you always have the figure displayed that way, the actual shield is always going to fall off. Funny again, the fact that they actually sculpted a shell on the back of Leo's body, body but they didn't actually paint it. I feel like if this is going to be his half shell on the back of his torso, then they should have just sculpted the torso without an actual uh, shell on the back of it. To sculpt it in there implies the fact that the figure now has two shells. Does that make now two halves make a whole? Is he a whole shell hero? No, that's just absolutely ridiculous. But what do you guys, though, think of the Turtles of Grey's Gull Leonardo? Decent looking figure or a total pass? Let me know what you think of this line down below in the comments section. Now, of course, we are going to be looking at the rest of the entire first wave. The first wave consisting of Leonardo, uh, Donatello, at least of the Turtle Brothers. Then we're also going to be looking at He-Man and Man-in-Arms. 
I'm honestly, of the first first wave of figures, I'm the most honestly interested in the He-Man. And I think that might also be the same thing that's going to carry over to the future waves, where I'm kind of going to be a little bit more interested in the mutated master characters than may be, maybe going to be the case for the actual Turtles. But we'll certainly see as we look at the rest of this remaining line. If, by the way, you guys are interested and like to get this one for yourself or any of the rest of the new Turtles of Grayskull, they are available in many online sites. I just happen to have picked this one up over at Entertainment Earth. The beauty, at least, of going Entertainment Earth's route, if you guys wanted to go that, that direction and go to their site, using the provided link down below in the video description will actually save you a knockoff right away 10% on your total purchase, providing anything is currently in stock. It doesn't have to necessarily be the Turtles or Masters figures. Anything that's in stock over at Entertainment Earth will knock right away 10 percent off so feel free to do a little bit of shopping uh, also again if you guys haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell bell, bell notification can't even get that all out and make sure of course you're coming back because we are going to be looking at the reviews of donatello man at arms and he-man maybe not necessarily in that particular order as always guys thanks for watching see you guys next time